Well, welcome, good afternoon. Welcome to our 2015 State of the University Address. My name is John Winsek, and I had the privilege of serving as the Interim Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs here at Virginia Commonwealth University. I am so pleased to see many of you here today in the University Student Commons and thankful to many others who are joining us via live streaming through our website, vcu.edu. I'm very pleased to welcome members of VCU's governing boards who are here with us today. Rector Bill Ginther from the Board of Gov uh, Visitors, uh, Nancy Everett and Frank Hall, and from the Health System Board, George Emerson. Thank you for joining us today for this important event. The State of the University Address is an annual tradition at VCU that provides our community, the faculty, the staff, and the students an opportunity to reflect on our many successes and to look forward to and learn about future goals and aspirations. After his remarks today, President Rao will be taking questions. We have microphones ready for the questions in this room. Those of you who are watching online can post your que questions on our Twitter account, hashtag VCUSOTU, and our moderator will ensure that those questions are brought forward to the stage. Over the course of the next hour, you will hear a lot about VCU's distinctiveness. And there is so much to share. In fact, when I came to VCU about a year and a half ago, I knew that this university was very special. I knew that it was on a positive trajectory, one that I wanted to be part of. Over the last nine months, I've, I've been blessed to serve as the interim provost here at VCU. I was fortunate that I could come to work every day with people who partner with me to share in VCU's distinctness. President Michael Rao, our dynamic faculty, our students, and our staff. And finally, and most importantly, all of you in the audience who support VCU in so many different ways. Next month, our distinctions will grow even further as we welcome our new provost, Dr. Gail Hackett. She too recognizes the special nature of our university and our community. But what is that distinctiveness? What makes VCU so special? Why do we claim that VCU is distinctive? We asked a few members of our community and we put together this video. I think you'll get the idea. Your first question, what is unique about VCU? <laughs> What, what makes BC unique and distinctive? Probably that diversity. Definitely the diversity. You can walk around, you'll see people from all over the world. Diversity of the student body, the diversity of thought. This is why people come to VCU. That has kept me here for 18 years. I don't know, VCU is just not really afraid to be itself and it's not like other colleges and I wouldn't want it to be like other colleges. I think what's distinct about VCU is that we believe that learning and creating new knowledge can happen anywhere. The school is so, such a part of the city of Richmond. Most schools have lines that mark the end of a campus and where the community begins. VCU has blurred those lines. VCU is perfect for me because of my interest in serving the underserved. With President Rao's urging, a lot of us are now thinking about uh, the best way for us to be successful individually is to do things for others. Uh, working together, even when there is no tangible benefit or reward. They really embrace working for the community and with the community. They're feeding to each other as well as on each other, and as a result, a lot of amazing things are happening here. One of the things I love about VCU is it's still a young university and allows opportunities for, for shooting from the hip sometimes, for trying something new. I never know what is my next day is going to be like. Not being afraid to get into new territory. I, I like it that way. Since I enjoy building things, um, this is a perfect job for me. It's a lot of fun. Every day something's new. It's been an amazing place to work as a, a working parent, a woman with a career. And every day I feel like it feeds my soul and it makes me want to be better professionally and personally. I guess in high school I was like really weird and I came to VCU and like my weirdness and anime love kind of worked. I've been getting such a great support here, you know, all my, uh, all my 25 years. And I couldn't imagine going anyplace else. I love this place, you know, I mean, it's like my home now. I see in VCU who I aspire to become. Everything 
that I hold as core value when it comes to my career, I feel like I can accomplish here at VCU. And it's really just, it's just a good fit for me. I really can't explain it. It's just a good fit. You know, when you know, you know. This is my school. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Then we're done. Well, if a picture is worth a thousand words, then that video has got to be worth 10,000. So I'd better get started. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And thank you, all of you, for taking the time to be here together with us. It is inspiring to see so many people in that video, so many people in this room, and frankly, throughout our entire community who are thinking about Virginia Commonwealth University in so many different new ways. We're all fortunate to be part of a university that truly is distinctive anywhere in our nation. We look like no place else, we act like no place else, and we achieve like no place else. And that's thanks to our people, who are like no other people I know. People like Paul Bukovekas at the Rice River Center, who's working on three different continents to give people the opportunity to gain access to clean water that they need to live. People like Marquita Aguilar, who is a beloved staff member in Humanities and Sciences, whose personal investments and commitments in philanthropy have supported dozens of students now who needed just a little bit of help in continuing their education. And people like Anna Moore, who's a student of, mu of music, who spent her summer break not on a pristine Atlantic beach, but in a penurious African village, teaching music to 100 children and building community stores that will now fund their school. These colleagues inspire us to believe that our world will be a better place because of their leadership and because of their wisdom. And they remind us that VCU is a university that performs best in the world, among the best in the world. And we have gotten there in a way that is absolutely and positively, distinctively VCU. Our legacy of innovation and education, engagement, and healthcare is not only translational, it's transformational. This has been our work for generations, beginning as the region's first medical school, imagine this, 177 years ago. But in recent years, we launched Quest for Distinction, and we did it together. VCU's progress has been especially profound. We have become one of America's premier research universities in a very short period of time. Consider that my faculty colleagues have achieved a record level of sponsored research and creative activity last year, by the way, funded to the tune of more than 262 million. We are now truly an institution that competes among the major research universities across the Commonwealth, but throughout the nation as well. VCU faculty members started six companies last year while mentoring our students to begin eight more. That's not surprising, but it's certainly remarkable. More than one in seven VCU students, by the way, will start a business before they graduate. So when Gail Hackett becomes our next provost on March 1st, She's going to join and she's going to lead an excellent faculty. I thank our faculty, our staff, and our students, all of you, who continue to raise VCU's academic profile, which helps us attract renowned scholars, including people like Provost Hackett, who elevate Virginia Commonwealth University's brand around the entire world. I'm grateful to Dave Surrett and Susan Gooden and members of the search committee for the provost for their great work in bringing Gail Hackett aboard. And I'm enormously thankful to John Winsick, whose service as Interim Provost and Vice President for Academic <laughs> Affairs John, your service has been nothing short of exemplary. When you assume this role, I asked you to think and act not like an interim who would keep things steady, but as an investor and as a catalyst in, pro in the progress of one of America's great research universities. And that's exactly what you did. Thank you. And like our people, I have to say that our programs also make us very distinctive. 
consider VCU Medical Center, which is both the region's safety net hospital, but also the highest ranked hospital. And let there be no uncertainty, we will continue to be number one in every way, from finding causes and cures, to serving our diverse patient population with dignity, to treating each other with respect, to giving our students the best educational and research experiences anywhere, we will be competitive, accessible, and distinctive. While walking through our medical center recently, I had an opportunity to meet a gentleman who's from a small town in northwestern Virginia, or as he called it, the other side of the mountains. His wife was very sick, so he brought her to VCU, although doctors in his corner of the world actually said they, were, they wanted to refer her to some place that was closer to them. And so you know what he said? He said, but I knew that she'd actually get better care here. And so he has gotten better care as well, by the way. Physicians, nurses, and healthcare providers of all types at VCU Medical Center have helped him find the comfort of a home here in Richmond, while also giving his wife the comfort of their consummate care. Across the medical center, my colleagues continue to advance our vision of a nationally premier health system that is second to none and distinctive from any place else. They're combining world-class health care with first-class service, which the patients we serve in Central Virginia, South Hill, the other side of the mountain, and beyond, they continually note it. And they help us in so many ways, including play a role in helping us earn the American Hospital Association's coveted McKesson Quest Prize, Qual Quest for Quality Prize. We are very proud to care for the most vulnerable patients and their families in specialties and subspecialties that you can find no place else. For example, we are the region's only pediatric level one trauma center, and we serve more than 80% of Central Virginia's children who need treatment for cancer, cardiac conditions, HIV, organ transplant, burn, and mental health. We revived the region's only pediatric nephrology program less than four years ago, and under my colleague Tim Bunchman's leadership, it is now already ranked among the nation's top 30. VCU remains unambiguously committed to providing unrivaled health care, medical education, and medical research that will benefit all of Richmond and without question beyond. I thank Sheldon Retchen, formerly our Senior Vice President for Health Sciences and CEO of VCU Health System for his great work to elevate the health system for the last 12 years. And I'm pleased to congratulate Sheldon as he begins his new role at Ohio State University. You know, Sheldon hired a really great team, a great leadership team including now Interim Vice President for Health Sciences and Interim CEO of the VCU Health System as well as School of Medicine Dean, Jerry Strauss, and CEO of VCU Hospitals, sitting right here in front of me, John Duvall. As my partners, I know I can count on Jerry and John to help me ensure that we will not miss a beat as our national search progresses and as we work to find the leader who will continue to fulfill our vision of a distinctive and nationally premier medical center. In the medical center and everywhere else at VCU, we will continue our work to fulfill the ambitions of Quest. And we've made great progress. For example, our graduation rate at the undergraduate level is now 9% higher than it was before Quest began. And we continue to confer more and more degrees actually 300 more degrees than when Quest began. And that includes, by the way, graduating more Virginians than any place else. Our graduation rates will continue to increase, by the way, as a record number of freshmen, 82% are enrolled in a full course load. By the way, that number before Quest began was 62%. So do the calculations, that's a 32% increase. These students will transform their fields and they will change our world thanks to the remarkable educational experience that they will have here alongside my colleagues, their faculty mentors. What I've just described is a major research university in no uncertain terms. Whether you consider 
U.S. News and World Report rankings, data from the Benchmark Center for Measuring University Performance, inclusion in national associations, membership in the national academies, or any other metric, BCU has become a premier American public research university. We are truly premier. We are truly exceptional and truly distinctive. So let me illustrate that point. A few months ago, I joined a few colleagues, including McKenna Brown from Global Education and Hong Cheng from the Robertson School of Media and Culture. We were together in China to help establish and strengthen strategic partnerships with leading universities in this important nation. As you may know, rankings and reputation are very important in China, especially as they relate to academics. So important, in fact, that China's Ministry of Education actually sponsors its own ratings and, and does research to find out which research universities around the world are the top. And I'm proud to tell you that that list does include VCU. We are among the top 200 in the world, according to China. Students in China also say that the most important factor in their choosing a school is how it ranks internationally. A university's reputation matters in China like no place else, and they won't partner with you unless you perform and unless you bring a tangible benefit. That's why I was delighted to hear our counterparts at the best Chinese universities actually tell me so many things that I didn't even know about VCU. They were eager to collaborate with us, impressed by the scholarship of our faculty members, but I want you to know they, even, they talked about the scholarship of our students as well. They were impressed by the volume and breadth of our research and our creative, creative activity, and by the ways in which we are advancing human health. In the most rankings conscious place on the planet, VCU is seen as a premier research university. So the time has come for us to move our conversation from being an aspiring institution to being the very best. We must talk about how we are and are among the very best. We are there. You know, this got me to thinking a little bit about an article that I once read about Steve Jobs, who was Apple's uh, founder and famously innovative chairman. The writer had asked Steve Jobs why he thought Apple had been so successful in this crowded marketplace that they were in. I expected that he'd say something like technical superiority or maybe impeccable design or maybe both, but you know, he didn't. Instead, what he said was it was because they were distinctive. He said it was because they were distinctive. And you know, that originally took me by surprise until I started to think a little bit about it. And then I started thinking about how distinctive is also a key to VCU, being distinctive is also a key to VCU success among peer research universities. Not just now, but long after we've all moved and left our legacy behind, distinction will be important. So let me explain. Steve Jobs knew that he was an incredible, working in an inc incredibly competitive world. And for Apple to succeed, it needed to somehow stand out. He understood that people often make choices based on their perceptions, both subtle and obvious, often influenced by something's distinctiveness. For better or worse, it's what's unique about things that really define them. It's their distinctiveness that captures people's attention, inspires their imagination, and importantly, rewards their decisions. Okay, so what makes VCU distinctive? Well, I've been thinking about this the last few days, and I see four ways that inspire me and probably most of you as well. There are diversity, our vibrant urban environment, our accessibility, and our commitment to making it real. So let me walk through these. First, our diversity. Our people are as distinctive as we are. We have the most diverse and inclusive student body of any university in Virginia. We also graduate more minority students than any place in the state. And we have closed the graduation gaps for minority students. Our diversity 
has made us a national model, and now we strive to shape the national conscience. To do that, we've got to continue enhancing diversity at VCU in all of its forms, and we will. In partnership with our faculty senate, along with the Black Educators Association, I've asked members of my cabinet to review and ensure effective strategies to recruit and to retain premier underrepresented faculty members. And I have... And I've also charged a task force led by Vice President for Inclusive Excellence Wanda Mitchell and President Emeritus Jean Trani with recommending ways to further diversify our student body. And I look forward to their report, which I expect to receive in the next few weeks. Those who say that a research university can't promote both excellence and diversity are going to collide with the reality that BCU is already doing it. Our new freshman class is both the most diverse and academically accomplished. It's the most in our history, and it's the second year in a row that that's been true. One third of these new, these new freshmen that we bring in are first generation college students, and almost one third come from low income households, a number that far outpaces research university peers. A generation ago, many of these students might not have had the opportunity to graduate from a premier public research university. Not because they didn't have the acumen, but because they didn't have the kind of access that we have been able to provide. Indeed, the student body at many research universities still doesn't look like ours, but we will continue to ensure that the world's best and brightest students can not only get into a research university like VCU, but that they can thrive here, and perhaps most importantly, write whatever future they imagine. Diversity is a big issue, and big steps are needed to ensure its viability. That's why I'm proud to announce that one of the ways that we will continue diversifying our university will be by eliminating a required SAT score for admission to VCU for many students. Studies show, Studies show that the SAT has racial and socioeconomic biases, and that it does not accurately predict how a student will perform in college. And yet, it has been an obstacle for too many college-ready students for too long. So beginning this fall, your ability to succeed at VCU will no longer depend on your ability to pass a test that's fundamentally flawed. VCU remains committed that what you look like or where you come from will never determine how far that you're able to go. The second way that we're distinctive is our urban, our vibrant urban environment. VCU is indispensable to the Commonwealth and to the communities that we serve. We have the unique distinction of developing both our region and those who are going to lead this region by creating an innovation, an innovation ecosystem that will nurture great minds and promote great ideas. From Broad Street to Bonaire, our region is vibrant and it's engaging and becoming more so every day. It's our home. And though we are a national university, we will always be Richmond's university and we commit that what we will do is everything possible to ensure that the greater Richmond region is a place where innovation soars and where creativity flourishes. Many of the great ideas that will move Richmond forward will be born in laboratories, studios, clinics, classrooms, and even dorm rooms on our campus. It's in our nature as a research university to champion the ideas that we know will solve humanity's biggest needs. In doing so, we're never going to claim that we have every answer. But we do remember that incomplete ideas of today often become inconceivable breakthroughs tomorrow. And so we'll always open our doors to those who will join us in innovating, whether they're across town or across the world, or across the lines of industry and field of study. Yet we not only strive to shape Richmond, 
we value the many ways that Richmond actually shapes us. There's a young woman whose name is Nazgul Naruzi, whose life has changed because she's come to Richmond. Nazgul is from Iran. She wanted to study product innovation, so she began carefully researching the world's best academic programs in this field. And so I guess I should say by that I mean she Googled. <laughs> and so what Google brought back was VCU. By the way, Google owes us now. So Nazgul enrolled here, and she pursued uh, her master's degree in product innovation through the Da Vinci Center, studying how products are packaged, and she worked to find ways to do it even better. And because her classrooms were actually so close to one of the world's leaders in this area, Mead West Vaco, Nazgul worked, went to work for them. She graduated with her master's degree in December, and she's now going to actually help VCU launch our new living learning program this fall that's focused on innovation. At the same time, she's going to pursue her PhD in nanoscience and technology at VCU. With her passion and her talent for innovation, Nazgul will someday change the world. And it all started because of VCU's distinctive connection with our vibrant urban environment. So, the third way in which we are distinctive, our accessibility. While we're changing humanity through, the world, through our world-class research, education, engagement, healthcare, we still, at our core, are what we've always been. A university that's committed to student access and student success. We are still fundamentally focused on people and creativity and the concepts that are going to help these people flourish. Part of our distinctiveness among premier research universities is that we are committed, without compromise, to both access and excellence. And going forward, every decision we make must be viewed through this dual lens. We cannot sacrifice excellence for the sake of access, and we will never slam shut the doors of opportunity so that we look like someplace else. Access at VCU has to mean that we will hire and retain diverse and internationally premier faculty members, and we will work hard to give them every resource that they need to be successful. In the year ahead, I will address <laughs> In the year ahead, I'm going to address the issue of resources, including competitive compensation. This is among my highest priorities, including in this session of the General Assembly. We have studied this issue, and now it's time to act. In the coming weeks, I'm going to announce a plan to reward those members of our faculty and staff whose contributions to this university and to the academy outpace their compensation. We cannot do everything we want to do we were reminded of that, by the way, when we were asked to return $10 million in this biennium in terms of general appropriation to help offset the Commonwealth's budget deficit. But we must do something. Even if Rome wasn't built in a day, part of it was. And so we're going to do everything that we can. Access at VCU must also mean that students who enroll here can graduate here so that we all have to work to, so now we all have to figure out how to work to eliminate some of the obstacles that we know stand in the way. That is why I have committed that VCU will increase its online and hybrid curricula, helping more students to gain access to the courses they need, particularly when they are off campus. No matter where they are, no matter where they learn, they will be able to learn successfully. It's why we will continue to invest resources in student counseling, in student well-being, in academic advising, in undergraduate research, in safety, and in spaces like Cabell Library that will help our students to succeed. It's why I've asked my team to strengthen our efforts in serving active duty military, veterans, and their families who want to pursue higher education to help us double our international student population by the end of this decade, beginning in China, and to expand articulation agreements as well with all 23 of our community colleges here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. 
And it's why we are leveraging and managing our resources in new ways that will foster access for high achieving people to be a part of Virginia Commonwealth University. Our comprehensive fundraising campaign, which moves into the public phase in the next 18 months, will focus on endowments and scholarships that will create opportunities for my faculty colleagues and also increase access for our students. We will continue to develop a budget model and investment management system that will be distinctive to VCU and that will put our resources right where they're needed to help ensure that we are always advancing both access and excellence. We will not compromise on, ac on access, nor will we compromise on excellence. And these ideals will become our guideposts in determining how we dedicate and how we commit our precious resources. Taken together, these projects will help make certain that VCU is distinctive among our research universities because of our essence, not inefficiencies. These may be difficult and at times uncomfortable conversations, but they are necessary next steps for the long-term sustainability of this university and its mission. I appreciate the support and the feedback that all of you have given and will continue to give during this important process. Okay, so the fourth way that we are distinctive, our commitment to making it real. Long before she enrolled at VCU, when Faith Ajahi was growing up in Nigeria, she was inspired to change the world for women like her aunt, who had a terribly difficult pregnancy that almost took her life. Doctors in her remote region were at that time ill-equipped to help. A healthy baby was finally born, and a calling was also born in faith. Let me quote something she said. She said, I wanted to be an obstetrician before I even knew what that was. In some places in Nigeria, pregnancy procedures used, used to mean either life or death. If you couldn't deliver the baby naturally, it was likely that you and your baby weren't going to survive. So holding her aunt's miracle baby for the first time convinced Faith that she needed to help women and children around the world gain access to the care that they need. She came to VCU to study biomedical engineering because in her words, when you come here, you do more than learn something new, you learn how to make it better. The trademark of the VCU experience, why we are distinctive, is that we do hear everything that has a real impact on our world. Like Faith did, our students will use quickly what they learn to reinvigorate the human experience. Our faculty members are going to create and innovate in ways that redefine human ingenuity. And our medical researchers and clinical care providers will find causes and cures that reignite human hope. What we do better than any place else I know is we work together as one university to solve real problems that matter to real people. Colleagues in art and medicine, for example, come together to change the way that surgeons think about the body. Colleagues in social work, nursing, and pharmacy opened a clinic that serves patients who have special needs but little access to health care. This is a clinic, by the way, that was recently uh, named by the Association for Public Land Grant Universities, it was given the most prestigious award in the area of community service, the nation's most prestigious award. Colleagues in engineering and education are helping to ensure that America will have enough STEM teachers to meet the demands of the 21st century. And the list goes on. Because at VCU, what you study, what you teach, what you research, and what you create doesn't mark the boundaries of what you can contribute, but rather the beginning of it. That's what making it real means, and that is distinctive. As we start this new year together, we recognize that we are all part of a distinctive research university, one that performs with the elite but is not elitist, one that measures progress in the number of lives that we transform, one that understand, understands, as Steve Jobs did, that what makes us distinctive is what makes us great. You are exemplary colleagues in every way. I appreciate your dedication 
and your commitment to this premier distinctive research university. And most importantly, the most important message I can deliver today is to say thank you to all of you. I think at this point uh, we are going to uh, respond to questions that you might have, and I know that some will come electronically. Does anyone have any questions they would like to ask? Okay, okay we'll start in the first row. <laughs> Good afternoon, Dr. Rao. You mentioned competitive compensation for faculty and staff. Um, I was hoping and wanted to hear your thoughts about whether or not this included A&P faculty. I know um, that classification of faculty have been left out of some of these models in the past. Thank you. Certainly. Um, yes, what I'm talking about when I say faculty and staff is all faculty and staff. And uh, we, we do have several things that we're working on. One, of course, is compensation for performance. And then we also are going, going to look as well at where people are and where, whether or not they are in a competitive spot. Um, so it will involve a look at both T&R faculty um, and certainly in multiple contexts, but it will also include uh, A and P faculty and our staff as well. I have concerns about everyone's compensation at VCU. I think it's an issue in every category I can think of, and it's what I'm working very diligently on, driving Bill Decatur crazy. <laughs> Find more money. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, I'm Andrew Botts. I'm an engineering student. Um, what are we doing to address more, i um, sorry, to okay. uh, attract more nationally recognizable brands for internships and employment opportunities for students? Because uh, from my personal experience in the career fair, it tends to be very Richmond-centric or in particular not exactly anything I'm interested in. <laughs> okay. um, Andrew, yes. thank you. Um, that's good feedback. And um, I'm guessing everyone in the room has heard that. <laughs> and, hope, and, and I'm confident my colleagues um, uh, are, are listening to that as well. Um, you know, it was interesting when I was in a previous place, it was a more uh, 28,000 students in a rural location. And it seemed like we would get folks not so close, but from very far away to come in. And so um, there are ways, of course, of, of uh, Im improving uh, all of it. We're all working on improving um, the human experience in every way that we can. And certainly most important to us in our mission is our students. So let me take that feedback and pass it on and ask that we um, take a look at how we can bring other employers to the table as well. And it might be important for um, you to be a part um, of that leadership as well in responding by helping us to ensure that students will also make good use of those who come and show interest and, and show sincere interest in being um, engaged with those employers who come from a distance. Other questions, comments, or feedback like Andrew? Any Twitter questions? Questions from social media? <laughs> Did everyone hear the question? It's a question about um, safety. Do you want um, me to repeat it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, when I recommend at VCU, parents often are concerned with safety, fairly or not. Any safety improvements to look forward to? Yes, um, we, we will always continue to improve upon safety. Um, just by count, some of the things that we have done. Number one, I have to tell you, I feel like I'm partnered with the most competent chief uh, of police anywhere in the world. Um, John, oh, John. I didn't even see you or know that you were there, but, um, but I, I feel that way whether you're in the room or not. Um, and um, 
really, John has just done an incredible job of helping build the team. Um, we have added a very significant number uh, of members to his team, very community-centered, community-minded, university-minded uh, uh, officers who are committed to our safety. Um, one of the other most incredible things that we did is, uh, frankly, technology, using technology to identify uh, folks who are on campus who shouldn't be on campus, number one, and secondly, should not be doing the things that they're doing on campus. And our crime solve rate has just gone incredibly high. Um, what is the number now, John? The crime solve rate? Yeah. But it was something like 90-some percent well, well, at one point. From our most recent perception of safety survey, 96% of students, faculty, and staff from both campuses reported feeling either safe or very safe on both of our campuses. We also take that information and look for areas of improvement each time we administer the survey. So we're constantly looking at your feedback, deploying our officers in the, police, in the places where people feel less safe or not as safe in other places. As I look at um, Rector of the Board of Visitors, uh, Bill Genther, I'm reminded that safety is one of my goals as well, along with compensation and some other things that is of, uh, are of interest to the board. But um, I, I'm confident that we're achieving our goals. Um, in the way of new uh, innovations, that sort of thing that you, we can expect going forward, any comments briefly, John, that you want to offer? One of the things that we've decided to do, is that everyone getting that, is we're actually implementing body-worn video cameras for all of our uh, police officers. Uh, most agencies do that to reduce use of force and to reduce complaints on their staff. Uh, over the past five years at the VCU Police Department, we've reduced officer-involved use of force by 65% on both campuses to include the health system. Uh, we've reduced complaints on our officers uh, by over 45%. So we're not implementing body-worn video cameras to reduce use of force and reduce complaints. We're implementing body-worn video cameras to provide a higher level of accountability to the community here at VCU. So that's our latest uh, innovation with, uh, with technology. Thank you, John. <laughs> Other questions? Good afternoon, Dr. Rao. Adam Caldwell with School of Social Work, and I was wondering if you could discuss VCU's plans for revi revitalizing Broad Street. Uh, certainly. Um, we will continue our retail strategy that we had put together and talked about and have for, for many years now. Um, my vision continues to be the same. I want Broad Street to feel like it's everybody's at any time of the day, any hour, including 2 and 3 in the morning, even though I know most students have gotten so tired studying at that point that they're sleeping. Um, but we want it to be safe at any point in the, in the day. And so um, the key really for VCU will, to be, will continue to be to be a good partner in, uh, in the, on, along Broad Street, Grace, Marshall. We're looking at all of that. And certainly we want um, to, uh, to look, we look forward to uh, our private counterparts, the city, the state, and others who are all active in the Broad Street discussion. We actually have another question from Twitter, Dr. Rao. Yes. Um, what do you say is the most important factor that helps the success of a first-time student at VCU? The most important factor that helps ensure the success of a student. You know, I really do think, as I think about great implementations at VCU, to me, one of them was University College, which happened before I came, and it was a great, great initiative. And I talk about it all the time in, in national conferences, because what it's done is it has created a sense of community. Um, it has brought students together, um, and really, more than anything, you know, what you're saying is, what, what the question asks is, a, a person who is at that point in their life, who is of that age, at that stage of their life, what is most important to that person? That, and what's most important to almost every human being is connection with other human beings so that when y you are beginning this journey, 
and things happen, you have a place to go. You have a place to go with people who you trust. And you know, that is one of the most important things that I say about VCU anywhere I go. And that is, I have colleagues throughout the VC, throughout VCU, any part of VCU, who every day I look in their eyes when I see them interacting with a patient or a student or each other. And there is so much, forgive me for being a little bit sappy here, but there is so much love and genuine concern for this other human being, that's what makes the difference for freshmen when they get here. And hopefully we can continue to reach out and find ways to um, assist and support freshmen and, 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 ev and everybody, including each other, who are in need of that. We have one more question back here, Dr. Rao. Dr. Rao, many people in this community are very concerned and care deeply about the Children's Hospital. Can you give us an update on what's happening with that initiative? You know, at VCU, our biggest concern has always been and will continue to be care for children who need it the most, and, um, and, and all children. Um, so that's our first and, and foremost concern. Um, we have entertained discussions um, engaging with uh, folks in the community about how to get there, and so we're uh, very much active in that, en actively engaged in that discussion, and look forward to whatever we can do to improve care for the children of this community, to improve pediatrics, medical education, health sciences education, and to improve upon pediatrics research so that uh, going forward, we can continue to strengthen our contributions to this community and preferably beyond throughout the, the mid-Atlantic. Mid that is our vision, to be a strong force in the pediatric space throughout the mid-Atlantic and beyond. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, good afternoon, President. <laughs> I'm uh, Christina Johnson from the dance department. I'm a senior this year, and I was one of the recipients for the Make It Real campaign. And I was very interested to be involved when I saw your email about ways my generation could prevent um, incidents or issues like the Ferguson one. And I uh, sent you an email that explained uh, how I was teaming up with my church, which is actually um, a worldwide church. It's over in 175 different countries. So it's actually the most diverse church. So I thought it would be very incredible to hold a seminar uh, which breached the gap and brought more talking about uh, where love, or I guess the origination of love comes from in order to allow n no space for hate in people's hearts, so I was really interested in getting that going, and I was wondering where you all are in the ideas of that. It, it, it's a great idea that our team is continuing to think about, and so uh, with your having uh, brought it to our attention, uh, we will continue to do so, and then we have a way of getting back with you, I think, right from your email address. Okay, and we will certainly do that. So um, Kevin Allison, who is right here in the second row, um, <laughs> My senior, ex senior, <laughs> senior executive assistant, I think, um, is going to be back in touch. Fundamentally, I love your concept, though. I really do. I think fundamentally, it gets to our existence as human beings, and you know how we continue to grow and and develop as human beings. And really, it's all about the relationships, and the relationships. Are, are fundamentally founded in in love. I know it's. I probably started all of this by saying that earlier, but it is one of the things that I just see and I feel so much in VCU people. There is so much of a commitment to people here, and it is what drives me every day to want to make this a stronger and stronger place. Which other question? From Twitter. Another, another tweet. <laughs> Um, what steps will you personally take to ensure VCU has a strong, accessible, and safe model for Title IX compliance? Um, Title IX has um, been a considerable uh, topic of discussion for our team. 
Um, we have put an enormous amount of time into this and an enormous amount of, of thought into this. Obviously, first let me say that um, there are incidents that, that exist everywhere and our first concern is always um, survivors of these incidents and, and providing care for them and doing everything that we can for them, including protecting every right that they have. Um, and what we have done is we have invested significant resources uh, in the Title IX area. And so uh, we often are talked to about administrative bloat, um, but candidly, um, we are investing significant areas, uh, resources in certain areas because they are fundamentally important to everything that we believe about our connection with, with students. And so um, we are in the process of putting that office together, and we are down to, Bill, I believe, uh, three finalists. And they all look really good and are very, very um, experienced and sharp in this area. So we're looking forward to uh, engaging with our new leadership and, um, frankly, looking at every aspect of, of Title IX and institutional equity within the context of, of really anything at the institution. I think we have time for one last question. Certainly. Okay. Do you want me to come over, Catherine? Okay. Sure. So the question is about uh, Quest for Distinction and where we are with that. Um, Quest for Distinction is currently under review um, by the leadership of uh, John Winsick as well as various represents representatives, meaning you have, I believe, in your committee um, faculty representatives, student representatives, um, and uh, others, staff members, who else? Deans and others. And so. Um, uh, I, I, of course, think of, of the whole group as faculty or staff, but in any case, have lots of folks around this table who have now come together and I've ad identified a few things about Quest for Distinction. One important one is that Quest for Distinction was a clear set of ideals, and we're very proud of that, but Quest for Distinction was a broad set of ideals, and we really need to narrow that a bit and focus the precious resources that we have, as I mentioned, um, on those things that really matter the most to us. And we will be making some choices, and we'll make the choices with the guidance of the team that has been reviewing Quest for Distinction. So um, that's coming along very well. We intend to use the revision, if you will, of Quest, or the refocusing of Quest, in shaping the next new budget. And as you can imagine, because I've probably said it four times now, and I'll make it a fifth, compensation is a very serious concern for me. Because again, you have something at VCU that people can't make up in places. It is, it is a, a synergy among people that has formed a culture that is so warm and so sincerely caring. I can't think of anybody at this institution who doesn't love this mission. I don't know anyone in any position at VCU, maybe I don't want to, if you know them, don't tell me. Um, <laughs> who doesn't understand why we're here. It's about education, it's about research, it is about care, and it is about service. I mean, those are the things that, that bring us together, and I have never seen a bigger commitment from more people any place. It's what I love so much. And because of that, I wanna keep that, and I certainly want to be able to reward the highest performers and make certain that they know that we value them. I should say all performers, but in any case, um, Quest will involve that. Quest with, will, without a doubt, continue to focus on shaping um, our commitment as a university, uh, leveraging, e leveraging each other, supporting each other, uh, doing more together so that we can, again, direct resources toward our students, direct resources toward our team so that our team is, is, is well taken care of. Okay. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate your attendance today. I never imagined there would be this many of you, and I'm so glad there were, uh, all of you here, that all of you came. And I look forward to a wonderful year together. We are going to make it real even more. Thank you so much. <laughs>